What's going on everybody? This is Sean of Raw Select Music and today I have a whole slew of records that I've been listening to as of late. Some of them I recommend way more than others and today I wanted to share my thoughts and opinions of them with you guys and let you know whether or not I think they're worth checking out. So with that being said, yeah, let's talk about these guys. First off, I want to talk about this record right here. This is Sauce 81, Nervous Breaks and Galactic Beat Beats Metal, selected and re-edited by DJ Kense. It's kind of a 12-inch slash EP release. There's a lot of really short, stemmy tracks that are largely more like DJ tools and production tools than they are like actual productions. But there are also some really cool electronically focused beats on here. Specifically, track number two on side a, which is Alien Attack, is this really cool synth arpeggiated beat with some really hard rolling drums to it that actually sticks out as one of the best beats I've heard in a long time. Hits really, really hard. There's a really cool tense texture to it. And there's a really just cool sound on this beat as well as across this entire record. Unfortunately, there's a lot of like really cool stem ideas that just don't feel fully realized. And I feel like they were more meant again to be used as production tools rather than as a full on listening experience. But there are still some really inspired tracks on here. The other one that really sticks out in my mind, Warp takes on this very mellow, seemingly half trap, half juke-esque halftime beat that's really, really cool and has this really mellow electronic atmosphere that's very similar to a lot of the same sort of melodic sense and texture sense that you would associate with the Sauce 81 production. Really dig that track as well as the song 5D on here which is a really another super cool mellow track. It's just a shame that this isn't a full-fledged project because I feel like the quality of the actual productions on here are so promising that I would actually like to hear hear the ideas on here presented in a more fully realized project. But even with that being said, there's still some really cool tracks that are worth listening to. So yeah, pleasant surprise. Found that I actually like the stuff on here a lot more than I thought I would. A cool project nonetheless. that I picked up because it was on sale on Jet Set, and that's Mind Design's Oblique Kitchen, originally released in 2012, reissued in 2020. And originally I sort of just wrote this project off as a fairly cool, mostly loop-based, sort of Ross G style LA beat tape kind of record. And actually repeat listens have made me realize that there's quite a bit going on on here. For one thing, the drums actually hit a lot harder than I expected. What I was thinking I was getting into was a largely sample and loop based project where there wasn't a lot of really pronounced drums and beats on here. And that turned out to be not to be the case. It definitely has a lot of Mind Design's signature uniqueness and off kilterness and I do appreciate that. But I also find that there are actually quite a few tracks on here that hit a lot harder than I initially expected. And I do like the fact that Mind Design is pulling from a fairly wide swath of sample sources. Pulling from some more electronic sounding textures and some more harder to identify sample sources. It's a pretty cool project. I do find that some of the tracks tend to blend together a little bit. Overall, I gotta say I'm pleasantly surprised by this record. I wouldn't say it's essential by any stretch of the imagination, but 
I definitely do find that there's enough going on here that I definitely want to keep going back to it and definitely recommend that if you're looking for a more hip-hop oriented sound from Mind Design that you might want to give this record a shot. probably the most meh of all the projects. And this one really pains me to say this because this was a record when it was announced that I was really excited to hear. Being a fan of two of his previous projects, Dirt Floyd, The West Side of the Moon and Dirty Dan, his project that he samples exclusively from Steely Dan Records. And I'll let you guess what he exclusively samples on this record. Dirt, 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 Dirt Beats had pretty much created a pedigree for himself of excellence that I was really expecting more from this project right here. And Mo Dirt, his collaborative project with Detroit rapper Mo Dirty and Dirt Beats on production is easily one of the most eh records that I've heard. Dirt Beats' productions on here are fine. They're serviceable to Mo Dirty's raps, which are also fine. But overall, there's really not that much that stands out about this record to me. Mo Dirty is a serviceable rapper who has a perfectly serviceable flow and perfectly serviceable lyrical content. But Dirt Beats is honestly like the most disappointing aspect of this record because a lot of the productions on here simply just do not hold up as instrumentals. And considering most of his previous projects up until this one have all been instrumental projects and they definitely hold up to listening to them by themselves. The ones on here really don't do that. They just feel flat and sort of lifeless. They have a little bit of a knock to them, but ultimately are just not that interesting by themselves. They are slightly elevated by the inclusion of Mo Dirty's raps on here, which adds a little bit more rhythmic punch to the instrumentals. But overall, just listening to the instrumentals, which the record itself also includes, they just really don't stand out. There are a few standout moments on here. The beat for What Am I Gonna Do is some pitch perfectly done, soul sample based chop up stuff. And I really dig that sound. And True Stories is also, again, another standout beat moment on here that's just got just enough knock on here to make it interesting. But as a whole, I I walked away from this project being not very impressed by it and overall feeling like I'm probably not going to return to this one very much. You still might want to give it a listen. There's a good chance that you're going to like this project more than I do. I, I think on the whole, this is easily the most disappointing record I've heard in 2020. And I think this was one that I could have left on the shelf instead of picking it up. And like I said, considering I was already such a big fan of two of his previous projects, yeah, this one's definitely a little bit of a letdown for me, so check it out if you want. It's not the most recommended record, and I think I'm just going to leave it there. a 2019 release we have the Ezra Collective's You Can't Steal My Joy which is a perfectly fine bit of modern jazz. I do appreciate that there are a lot more straight up modern jazz influenced hip hop beats on here and I do like a lot of the vocal performances on here. The one from Georgia Smith and Low Lyle Carner are two excellent soulful and hip hop vocal contributions to this record. There's tons of really tight musicianship on here. Everyone's definitely playing at an expert level. There's tons of great drums on here. Tons of great keyboard work from Joe Arman Jones. Tons of great horn work on here. Some of the horn stuff on here, especially on the opening track, Space is the Place, offer some of the more memorable melodies on this entire record. And I really do, much like a lot of Joe 
Jorman Jones's own solo work, appreciate the wide variety of genres that inform the music on this record. There's little bits of neo soul, hip hop, broken beat, straight up jazz, little bits of reggae. Honestly, I really dig this record. Plenty of infectious grooves, a lot of interesting musical textures and ideas, some great band interplay. I'd say at the end of the day, I don't find this record to be quite as colorful as Joe Arman Jones, and I don't feel like it nearly as inspired as Joe Arman Jones. I really feel like compositionally, those Joe Arman Jones records are much more focused on creating a certain vibe and a certain atmosphere, whereas these are just like some really super tight musicians working out some really cool ideas, whereas those Joe Arman Jones records really feel like they're working more on a compositional level. This record really feels like a group of extremely talented musicians working with some truly fantastic instrumental workouts, which is cool because it, in a way it really helps separate it from Joe Arman Jones. But I think ultimately, preference-wise, I lean more in the Joe Arman Jones category in terms of just musical preferences. I like that more composed feel to the music on those records, but that doesn't mean by any stretch that this record is a slouch. And this is one of the finer modern jazz records I've heard in a while. If you haven't picked this one up, Highly recommend you do so. A lot of great jams on here, a lot of great gems on here, a lot of great musicianship on here. Like I said, I just wish it was compositionally a little bit stronger, but that doesn't take away from what is overall a highly recommended album and definitely a very pleasant listening experience. And then finally we get to the one record that I really wanted to pick up in 2018 that I didn't get a chance to. Green album. I was a huge fan of Sam Wilkes' Wilkes album that came out in 2018, so much so that I named it my album of the year, and I still stand by that because I really do think that is the most inspired modern jazz record I've heard in a long time. And essentially what this is, is it works as a companion piece to that album. Highly recommend that you go back and check out that review because it goes a little bit more in depth as to what the sound that's on on here is like, but essentially it is modern spiritual jazz mixed in with a lot of very unassociated genres. There's bits into new age, there's little dips into ambient music, there's dips into free jazz, which most modern jazz won't even touch, and yet this record goes completely off the deep end and decides to dive into whatever genre that it's trying to do and it does it so successfully. This is seriously some of the most inspired music I think I've heard in the last five years easily, which is why Wilkes was such a welcome record to begin with, and that's why this one is also such a welcome record. And the great thing is, is it is not a note-for-note -note replay of Wilkes. Rather, it is reinterpretations of tracks from that album. The opener today definitely feels like it's going even further in on the thick, rich, lush atmosphere of the horns and electronics and the sample that was in the original track and playing around with it, and it blends in perfectly with a cover of Joe Henderson's B section of Inner Urge, which is definitely like one of the more free jazz tracks on here. And then there are also a couple of unreleased tracks as well. Ones like Alma and Unsure are welcome additions to the Sam Wilkes 
album Wilkes from 2018, and I really dig that. And the reinterpretations of the final tracks on Wilkes descending in the alternate mix that's on here are all absolutely excellent. The musicianship is fantastic. It doesn't feel necessarily like a live album in the sense that there's, the tracks are broken up by large amounts of live audience applause, and it really feels like it's just as much of a studio recording as any actual studio recording is. Tons of improvisation, tons of inspiration, tons of quality musicianship, tons of adventurous textures and sounds and arrangements. I can't speak highly enough of this record. If you want to hear what I think is one of the most inspired modern jazz records, highly recommend that you pick this up. Make sure you pick up Wilkes as well, as those two records are part and parcel of each other. And this is easily the best record that I've listened to recently and cannot recommend this guy enough. Definitely pick up if you haven't Sam Wilkes's Live on the Green. So that's going to be it for me today, guys. Thanks, as always, for watching. If you've listened to any of these records, please let me know what you thought about them down in the comments. If you want to hear any of these records for yourself, please head over to my WordPress blog because that's where I will be posting music links to any of the records that I talk about on this channel. And as always, please head over to my Mixcloud where you can check out Raw Select Radio, the audio component of this YouTube channel, as well as please check out the live streams that I've been doing here. I haven't been working working on a schedule, but I think what's going to happen is I'm foregoing doing the live streams over on Facebook and going to keep everything specifically here thanks to my brand new three camera setup that I have, I've been working with. So if you haven't been checking out the live streams, please make sure you do so because you can hear a lot of the records that I talk about in these YouTube videos as well as some of the records that I don't get a chance to talk about on this channel. Links to everything as always down in the description. But that's going to be it for me today guys. Thanks as always for watching and I will catch you in the next video. So until then, peace out!